All right, guys. So the former UFC strawweight champ and current flyweight Rose Namajunas, she defeated Tracy Cortez via unanimous decision. The event took place in her adopted hometown of Denver, Colorado. Wild High City, man. It's not easy to fight there. And I think we can officially say that we have another title contender uh, looking to take down Alexa Grasso. Mike Bond, were you impressed with her performance? I know that was a horrible GSP voice, <laughs> but it's so old school that no one might get the joke. But what were your thoughts, bro? Yeah, it was a good win for Rose, given the circumstances, right? Like short notice opponent change from Macy Barber, maybe not like a dramatically different style, but uh, still, you know, having that thrown at you on a couple weeks notice for her uh, a little bit you know, outside the norm for Rose. She doesn't usually fight under these circumstances and we don't usually see her being this active. So it's actually really nice to see her getting some momentum third fight since September when she moved up to 125 pounds and she did what she needed to do here, right? I think if she had got that finish in the first round after the knockdown, probably we would be speaking to her, speaking about her in much more glowing terms right now. But this was a clear win for her. Um, maybe you could say she slowed down a little bit towards the end. Cortez's round four and round five were her strongest. Um, actually, one judge gave her both those rounds, which I was a little surprised by, but she did solid work there. So overall, uh, a decent fight. Nothing you know crazy. We're probably not going to be calling back to this one in five years or anything, but for <laughs> Rose, a serviceable performance. She's now two and one since moving up to this division and definitely on the right direction if she wants to get that title shot and get that chance to become the second female two-division champion along with Amanda Nunes. Yeah, Mike, I agree, man. There would have been a nice exclamation point on Rose's win if she follows up on that knockdown, gets the finish, whether it was on the ground or she tells her to stand back up, mm -hmm. puts the finish. But I think, obviously, it, it wouldn't have vaulted her into next. I don't know about what's happening with Valentina Shashenko, but she's got that key loss to Manon Furon. But, yeah, it just gets played as a nice win um and and yeah going to a decision i mean that's that's just kind of what it does man um do you think she should have let her just get back up rather than follow her to the ground probably i mean in hindsight it's, you know 2020 right you never know what should have happened in that moment but i think for her yeah like you, if she had got cortez up there maybe she was still a little rattled uh we see a yes. few comments in there saying you know she punched the eyelash off which was definitely <laughs> a unique moment there too um yeah that would have made it all the better but for her to go in there that's what's like a veteran fighter right maybe someone who had less experience than rose would go in there gas themselves out going for a finish and then who knows how this fight looks as we go later on tracy cortez clearly durable uh, clearly she had the gas tank despite taking this relatively short notice i know she was supposed to fight next week but yeah i think for rose you can't really criticize too much because she's seen and done it all at elevation that is not the place where you want to overexert yourself and run your cardio out looking for an early finish yeah, her her first five round fight, and you get knocked down early. Goes, aren't you saying, get up? I mean, you got to feel that that fighter's shaking, deer in the headlights. What's coming next? You know what I mean? Like, I I just think that that's the move rather than follow them to the ground, unless you're you know this vicious ground and pound person. And Rose can hold her own on the ground. But what were your thoughts on the fight and that decision, which really maybe changes the narrative of what we're talking about here today? You know. I actually, uh, I actually was okay with her doing that. We discussed this yesterday, and you actually got me thinking, George, so much so that I went back and rewatched the fight. And I think maybe be, it's a little bit of what Mike said. You know, you're taking, you get, you get an opponent switch, you're at altitude. When I rewatched the fight, it really looked like somebody probably told her, "Look, let's just get in there, let's get the job done, and let's move on." Uh, because there were maybe moments where she could have taken a few chances, put her foot on the gas. She didn't, but she got the win, and she looked pretty damn good, I thought. Um, could she have done a little bit more? Maybe, yeah. I did wish she was a little bit more aggressive, but really, she looked dialed in from the beginning. I mean, it was all about experience. It was about her range, the distance. She used every tool in her belt to beat this girl. The only thing she didn't do was really put her foot on the gas, but at the end of the day... Given the circumstances, I thought she had really good fight IQ. I think uh, round one, I think she caught her pretty good, but I don't think she really hurt her. I think at that point she was just thinking, like, I'm going to cement the round. I'm just going to be on top. Um, could she have let her up? And, and, and would it have been a good look? Probably, but I don't think she would have got the finish. I think if you look at Tracy Cortez and the way she fought the rest of the fight, I think she was okay. Um, Rose, 
I think it's pretty solid. I think one of the things that we always have to worry about her is not just physically, but mentally where is she at? And I thought from beginning to end, it was a pretty impressive Rose Lama Yunus. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, like I said, I think I, I think I'm just now of the opinion, stand back up. Because if we started the fight and I put you down and you had, you know, as clear of a head as there's, as there's going to be at the start of the fight, imagine mm-hmm. now that I've knocked you down and I'm the vet. You haven't been in this position before. Get up. I think the crowd gets going. But then again, who knows what these fighters are thinking? Once it starts, it's probably one blur. You know what I mean? Um, it's just that, again, she's, she's just got so much experience with this. It, uh, it kind of reminded me of the Joanna fight. I think she put her down once and then put her put her out but obviously it wasn't that you know that close together all right now with this show accompanying us is the chat so chime in folks should she have let her back up or did you agree with her following her in you guys can chime in and we'll look over and see what's going on in the chat see if we can bring you into the show how about some shout outs real quick to lazy bed he's always in here he was hoping fada would be here but she'll be on a future episode soon David Vining, nice to see a new name in there. Chris Goes Wild, he's a veteran as well. Sky V's and L Daddy, met him at the UFC Fan Expo. Nice, nice fella. Uh, Beavis and Butthead says, Michael Vaughn, Georgian goes, how has your day been? So far, so good, my friend. And Todd Johnson says, another phenomenal episode is on the way. You must be pretty mystic, my friend, because, yes, we are (laughs) going to deliver another episode. What's next? For Rose, Mike. Mike, you do these pieces for us on Junkie. Mm-hmm. Folks, you can always count on that, right? But since you did them, kind of guide us through it again. Give us the cliff notes. What what should Rose do next? Yeah, I think, it, of course, she wants the title shot, right? I just don't see that happening for her unless some things really, really break her way. I mean, we lay it out, right? We seem to think that Alexa Grasso and Valentina Shevchenko will have their trilogy next, probably at the Sphere in September, Noche UFC. But of course, there's this lingering conversation. Will Valentina t- take that fight? If she doesn't, you would expect they'd have to go to Manon Fierro, right? She's on this nice winning streak in the division, 7-0, and I believe. She beat Rose not long ago, two fights ago, beat Aaron Blanchfield. So like, she's undeniably having dibs on the next title shot. Uh, whatever happens, whether she gets the call to fight instead of Valentina or she fights the winner of that trilogy fight between Grosso and Shevchenko, and that leaves Rose behind. I mean, you can't find a way to skip her in the queue unless people get injured, maybe Manon gets an injury or something like that, then maybe that's the only path I could see her for the belt. In which case, I think you got to revisit the Macy Barber fight, right? But again, you don't really know what's Macy Barber's health status. Like some of the stuff she shared when she had to pull out of this fight was pretty concerning. Uh, Echoes a lot of the problems she was having when she was trying to fight at straw weight, just with her body metabolism and all these different things going on. Um, So we hope she's okay. But who knows if she's able to continue fighting at 125 safely when she can get back in there. She might have to move up again. Who knows? So I don't even know if she's available. And then you go outside of there. There's not really a ton of options. You could go to Aaron Blanchfield. You could do the trilogy with Jessica Andrade. But Jessica Andrade is rumored to be back down at straw weight and, or maybe staying in this division. Who knows? Uh, Natalia Silva is a fight that's being flown out there. So there's nothing that's super obvious. I think Rose is kind of going to have to sit on her hands and see what happens with Macy. And if she's unavailable, I think you look at Aaron Blanchfield. Mike, I want to call a quick audible here, but you're as deep as it gets when it comes to these rumors and things like that. Mm -hmm. What is going on with the sphere, by the way, since you brought it up, it was rumored to be Grasso and Shashenko. More specifically, I guess, will Shashenko be fighting or is there something? I mean, it looks like she's always training. So that's one thing. And then this whole thing going on with O'Malley and Marab, does anything have legs that's floating out there? out in the internet in interwebs these days i think a lot of it has legs to a degree just ufc seems to be kind of slow playing getting this finalized i mean i've heard could get three title fights at the sphere i heard we could get one and it could just be the females so like i don't really know for sure what their plans are i know a lot of people saw um this video graphic thing come out from the ufc's french canadian broadcast on saturday saying that it was going to be topuria and hallway and mm. o'malley and devalishvili but uh, aaron bronstetter from tsn who is kind of like a sister station to the french canadian broadcaster up here rds in canada and uh he said that was just speculation from the announcers not like an official fight announcement or anything so i guess sit on your hands when it comes to that but as far as like this fight in particular with valentina and alexa i think it's probably gonna happen i mean it was weird when i did that interview with valentina 
whatever, like a month or so ago, right before Tough started. And she was like, oh, I heard like Noche UFC or UFC 306 isn't going to be Mexico themed. But that is clearly uh, incorrect, given like the artwork we've seen that's been put out there, given that it's officially been branded Noche UFC. So I don't know, like I get the sour taste in her mouth after what happened last time with the crowd influencing the judges, perhaps that famous 10-8 round and everything. So I can see her reluctance to do that again under these circumstances, but mm. I would I would not risk it. I'd take the fight if I was Valentina because who knows what's mm-hmm. going to happen after the fact, right? So I think we get that fight, and then if I had to go with my gut, my gut again, don't aggregate me. This isn't reporting. We probably see one of the two, either O'Malley um, and Debolish Philly or Hallway and Tapuri. I don't think we get both. Wow. All right. Damn, I'm glad I asked that because that definitely cleared a few things up. Girls, let's go back to what we were talking about. The, the other side of the coin here, Tracy Cortez dropped this fight. She came on strong, as been has been mentioned here, in rounds four and five. She even said it herself, just like, man, I just took too long to get going. She's got a nice record. She had a win streak going. So she doesn't probably fall too far from the top of the hill. But what would you do with her next? Not at all. I mean, the thing is, though, she was dominated. I don't feel like she needs to go out there and reinvent the wheel or anything like that, but she has to make some serious adjustments. I know her mentality, everything she said, she wants to get right back in there, and I think there are certain situations where that does make sense. Here, though, I really say you take some time off, you kind of go through that film, and you figure out what went wrong. Like, how much of this can I tweak right away, and how much of this is, like, big adjustments that I have to make, whether that's switching camps or immersing myself in in a certain skill set. She's got to figure that out. And I think that takes a little bit of time. So I would probably take a little bit of time off and just kind of figure that out because she's got all the skills to compete right now. But if she wants to take that next jump and really mess with the big dogs at the top, she's going to have to improve her game. She's going to have to make adjustments, some tweaks. Something's got to happen. But uh, I think she's still got upside. I think she's young. I think we could still have something here with her. You just have to take this situation and really, really put some effort into it. Because we've seen this a lot in our sport. We've seen it in boxing. Sometimes this pivotal fight where the fighter learns so much about themselves facing that next level of talent, if you don't respond to this correctly, sometimes it's in other sports, it's been a game changer. It's, it's really sp- spiraled other athletes. So I think a little bit of time off and just kind of, Go over that film and figure out what exactly you can improve right away. But definitely adjustments need to be made. Two losses can definitely shake a fighter's confidence. Uh, Go ahead, Mike. What were you going to say? No, I was just going to say I kind of look at it the opposite, right? I think it would behoove her to get right back in there. Like, what is Tracy Cortez's UFC career being? It's like one fight a year. I don't think she's fought more actively than that. So I think she needs to get going and try to carry some momentum off that, try to get on Noche UFC in September. Uh, of course, if she took damage here, if like that headshot in the first round, concussion, anything like that, of course, take the time you need. Maybe don't try to fight again in less than three months. But if they can get her something on Noche UFC, I think she should take that and try to keep momentum going. I, I understand everything goes said there as far as like the risk. And if you do lose, then it looks like a bad decision. But she's had so much time off in between these fights. Let's maybe try something different here and be active. Okay, so let me ask you guys this, because this is what I was thinking. Another recent loser of a big profile fight at 125 pounds was Aaron Blanchfield. I think I agree with Goes that I don't think Tracy's ready for Aaron, but I agree with Mike. Activity, man, it gets you back in the game, and she didn't took damage. Would you guys, if you were advising her, put her against Aaron Blanchfield, which by the way, if you beat her, you put Blanchfield now in that position where she's lost two in a row. She falls by the wayside. And now you regain everything you lost from the Nama Yunus fight. You, Mike, you're shaking your head. You wouldn't put her against Blanchfield. I mean, I would, I would be jumping <laughs> chopping at the bit to fight Aaron Blanchfield. If I was anyone, especially coming off a loss. I mean, that's kind of what you described there. You lose to those two in a row. Then people are like, okay, well, she can't beat any of these top five girls. And then she's way down there. Um, yeah. What I think would be right for her is if Miranda Maverick wins or loses on Saturday, I think you go back to the table on that because I kind of feel bad for Miranda, right? She got screwed Mm -hmm. in the situation. Tracy had like all the, uh, the clout and stuff. She has the following, you know, given all these reasons. And that was a huge moment for Miranda Maverick to try to take that from her. And now it's been partially taken away by Rose. And, um, you know, she's fighting essentially a nobody and Dionne Barboza now on Saturday. (laughs) And if she wins that, I think she deserves 
you know, that chance to take some of that clout from Tracy. I think that would only be fair to her. Add that to the list. Jabroni, <laughs> uh, tomato can, Tijuana taxi driver, a nobody, a jobber. There's like five, five um, of them. I like that. Just a I'll, nobody. I'll do, I'll do respect, of course. Yes, you know, we know. Yeah, she could, she could be <laughs> somebody this weekend and shut us all up. But, Ghost, do you like the Blanchfield Cortez matchup? Or would you say, no, 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 no. Maybe get someone coming up or whatever. Yeah, no, somebody on a different level. I think Blanchfield. The, the problem is if you, if you look at the fight, guys, this weekend, and you ask, what did Tracy Cortez do that was good? There's not much you can point to. She just was tough. She hung She hung with her, but she didn't really do too many things where you went, wow, okay, she's got something for that next level. Aaron Blanchfield is is basically the same. Like, uh, not maybe not, uh, maybe one step below, I think, right now, the way Rose Namajunas fought, but uh, that's still a tough out. Like, she's got to solve some things, so I definitely wouldn't lead her in that direction, but I do like the Miranda Maverick uh, fight. I think that would be fun. I think that is something that would be very entertaining and uh, kind of where she's at right now. That's something she needs. The eyelash is getting talked about in the chat. I wouldn't put it on the level of Taylor Tooley getting his tooth kicked <laughs> in UFC 1 by, um, what was his R. name, R. the Zabate guy? Gerard Gordo. Gerard Gordo, yeah. But, uh, yeah, that, that was kind of a trip to see the eyelash fly so quickly. Um, we got a guy named Protos. Hydralisk saying, I'm going to Florida this weekend. Forgot the Perry fight is on Saturday. Guess I'll be watching from the... Just go to it, bro. Go to it. It's at the Hard Rock, if I'm not you mistaken. You can get two-for-one tickets, I believe. So yeah. Bring a friend. Uh, exactly. Uh, but a shout-out there. And Steve Williams, he said it, yeah. The eyelash was one of the moments that makes MMA so unique. Everyone's laughing. I'm giving them props. Good comment there. Uh, all right, just to kind of put a bow on UFC fight card in denver any highlights anything you want to highlight here before we move on to the next topic there was some decent ko's uh goes how about you what, what, what do you want to put some shine on you know what man uh, so just watching that fight i really feel like drew dober helped save that card i mean let's be honest it was one mm -hmm. of the greatest ones but when you look at a guy like that all right this is somebody that the ufc definitely wants on their roster right it's always in shape he'll take a fight anytime any place anywhere he always comes forward. He's never afraid to take fights. The only thing is, it got me thinking, like, just sitting there, is the juice worth the squeeze? I mean, what he went through in that fight. I know they handed him 50K, but holy crap, man. I think if you hit me with a baseball bat in the same place, it might not even look as bad as what he took. And he's been taking some damage in fights. A lot of bravado. I commend him. He's definitely a guy that you want on your roster. But, man, this sport can get ugly, dude. And uh, Congratulations on putting on a great fight, but I really hope uh, he heals up and he makes some adjustments in his game because I don't know how many of these he can have. You know, last week I was saying I thought it was great for the UFC to kind of throw this up there because they would be unopposed. No NHL, no NBA. The soccer tournaments go early. But this is a slobber knocker, right? And this slobber knocker could possibly steal the show. And so putting Jean Silva versus Drew Dover, Jean Silva was coming off that other uh, fight not too long ago. I thought it was really, really wise of the UFC to put it together. Two grown men signed the contract. Yes, looking in hindsight, one of them obviously regrets the move. But um, I think it paid off. But anyway, the guy I want to highlight was Montel jo uh, Jackson. Just as he's getting ready uh -huh. to throw, Dominic Cruz says he throws fast and he's right to the point And he sure as hell did, man. Boom, one, two. Now, I don't know what Blackshear was doing. It looked like he was doing five things, either getting ready to parry, block, throw a knee. But in the end, he just made a face, probably the same one I would make if I was in a street fight, and boom, he got lit up. But Jackson's eight and two. This guy's a Dana White alum from 2018. That's six years now, right? I think mm -hmm. he's paid his dues. I think he's ready for a ranked opponent. He's won five in a row. Again, eight and two is just his UFC record, so he's getting the job done. He just doesn't have that one name. No disrespect to all the other ones. Those are decent names that tell us you're a player, right? But um, now I think he just he really deserves a name that's two. I think it's back-to-back, -back, two KOs as well. So let's give this guy a name, man. But I salute him, man. That was really, really nice work. 50 Gs, 16 seconds of work, and 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 now you can get right back to it. How about you, Mike Bond? Who do you want to highlight? 
Yeah, we'll definitely give a shout out there to Montel Jackson as well. Just a couple stats on him, I guess, coming out of uh, that fight. He now has the most knockdowns landed in UFC bantamweight history with 11, which is pretty impressive. Yeah. Uh, he's got a knockdown in seven straight UFC fights which is tied for the all-time record for consecutive fights with, these are some names, Chuck Liddell, Rampage Jackson, Cody Garbrandt, and Josh Emmett. So yeah. that puts him up there with Fine some company. elite hitters. And yeah, he's obviously the lightest of the bunch in terms of weight classes there. And uh, yeah, that 18-second knockout was the second fastest finish in UFC bantamweight history one second behind Eric Perez's 17 second finish at UFC 150. So uh, definitely put up some stats there. Montel Jackson, I agree. Definitely deserving of top 15 guy. And you don't really, you know, bantamweight is probably the hardest division to crack the rankings in, right? Mm -hmm. I'm sure we can yeah. probably all agree with that. So he's getting real close and he deserves a shot to be in there for sure. But the guy that needs to be recognized, I think, from this card uh, as we're talking about statistics is John Silva, right? Like him making the quick turnaround, yeah. getting two UFC wins in two weeks. He's only, I believe, the fifth person to do that. Uh, many have attempted. People have tried on seven days notice, 10 days notice. Hamza Chmaev holds the records at 10 days notice, but they've either lost one fight or the other. For him to go in there and get both is huge. And to do it the way he did, I mean, he tore through Charles Jordan at UFC 303, missed weight, that had to be noted, and then moved up and looked extremely comfortable at 155 and beating up a guy like Drew Dober. I mean, dude, the way he was tossing him in some of those clinch exchanges and stuff, you're like, holy crap, like, is he the, the bigger fighter here? I think he... It may be a little short and a little short of reach for 155, but he's definitely got the strength there and just you know battered Dober in there. So he deserves big shout outs for doing that. I'm curious to see how he goes and certainly one of the most unique personalities in the UFC right now. That spinning elbow too, man. That is a weapon because he does seem to throw it, um, whether it's set up or just on the fly, and it does some damage. Yeah, I'm a big fan of that guy. All right, just the clean up. Oh, go ahead, Mike. No, I was just going to say before we move on, what are you seeing a bunch of people talking about in the chat? What did you guys think of uh, Abdul Razak Al Hassan versus Cody Brundage? Oh, uh, that's the no contest fight. Yeah. Oh, yeah. uh, man. I, 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 okay. Al Hassan, I know he's been through a lot. He talked about those allegations, talked about it for the first time. I saw a dude with a lot of rage, and I didn't know if he was. He bottled it and was letting it go. But yeah, I mean, I really wanted to see this fight you know, play out, felt bad for, uh, Brundage was Nichols' former opponent, right? Yeah. Yeah, and, and he's hometown, so, like, two guys really could have had a moment here, and they didn't, but, was that your question, Mike? Sorry. I, I'm like, no, I, White. I, lost, I lost the thought of the, uh, <laughs> No, it's just kind of what you thought. I mean, obviously, Cody Brundage, he had a similar incident to this before, got a DQ win, and mm. I know a lot of people think he's, like, milking it and stuff, but those were, those were clean shots to the back of the head. There was at least a couple, and uh, yeah, I mean, I think Abdul Razak Al Hassan is lucky he didn't get disqualified here too. You can say what you want about Cody Brundage; it's it's been a weird UFC run for him. There's no question about it. But I'm not going to sit here and question his fighting heart and stuff like that. Like he gave he gave Bo Nickel a fight as good as anyone we've seen so far. So if you think that yeah. this guy's in there looking to quit, I mean, he could have quit 20 times against Bo Nickel and he didn't.